Greetings and welcome. My name is Aaron Craig with Beyond Us Games. And in this multi-part tutorial, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a fully fleshed out dialogue system that you can import and use in whatever game you're creating. So this dialogue system is going to look like this. You walk up to an NPC, whether that be a robot, a sign, whatever it is, and you press for me, spacebar, and the text is going to appear on the screen. It's going to know exactly how long and how wide it should be, and it can display multiple text boxes worth of text. And then you're going to be able to choose from several different options. And you'll be able to go through this as many times as you want to have a conversation with it. So I said I'm having a terrible day, and then I can continue to respond and I can talk to this robot. Now, we're also going to set it up so that if you want something to happen off of the conversation, like I tell him to bite me, and then it says that he bit me. So it, it's gonna know that it's doing something. You're gonna be able to set it up so that conversations have impact on the game or the world or the character or whatever you're doing. We're gonna work on making this over the next several series or the next several parts because it's fairly difficult and it's not a place to start out if you are just beginning. So if you're a newbie and you don't know how to create objects or uh, how to write any GML whatsoever, this is not the place to start. I recommend looking at my Getting Started with Game Maker series, get a, get a grips on that, and then come back to this. With that being said, I don't want to take the first part of our tutorial and have it just be doing the basics. So this I am going to have for you guys to download as a project. Uh, I'm going to have the sprites imported, the objects created, just the bare bones objects, uh, the room set up, and the dialogue system object already in place. So that when you download and open this project, you can start right from here. So it's not going to take very long to get set up. That'll be linked in the comments below as well as the complete and finished project with comments on all of my code. So you guys can take a look at that. If you just want to download the finished project, play with it yourself, learn how to use it without me talking to you. That's great. So let's go ahead and dive right into this. First thing we're going to do is jump into our dialogue system. We're going to create a event, a create event, and drag in some code here. And we're going to be using some global variables. So global variables are variables that can be accessed from any object without having to specify where they're coming from. This is going to be very useful as we get going. And we're going to create two of them. We're going to say PC talking and message giver. And that's all we need to do with that. Then we're going to come into Sarah. Now, I've already got her movement, and I've got it commented out here as well, so you can see if you want to take a look at that and how I do movement, but we're going to create another code inside of the step event, and we're going to check for a collision with the robot. Now, the best way to do this, or at least the easiest way to do it, is by using a collision circle. So we're going to say x, y, which is the x and y of Sarah, because she's the one running this code, a radius of 64 pixels, and we're going to say it's looking for the object robot, we want it to be precise, and we want it to not be looking for ourselves. Okay, so we don't need to actually check if it's true or false, because Collision Circle will return uh, an ID of the instance that it's running into, and if it returns anything besides zero, then it will be true, otherwise it's false, so we don't need to add that extra piece of code. Now we're going to say if keyboard check pressed VK space. So that's just saying if we are colliding and if they press spacebar, do this code. What we're going to do is we're going to set message giver and we're going to set it to this collision circle. So we can actually copy this because like I said, collision circle returns the instance that it is running into. Now, this isn't the most precise way because this kind of collision circle, this kind of collision detection uh, checks all around it and it will just pull one random entity if there are multiples. So for this, for this scenario, and I'm guessing for most of your games it'll be fine, but if you need precise collision, knowing exactly which object you want to interact with, a collision circle is not the best way to go. We're going to set PC talking equal to self. Then we're also going to call a script. It's going to be called script dialog. Now, we haven't made it yet, so let's go to scripts and let's create a new script. And we're going to call it scr dialog. Press the checkbox 
And then our code here turns blue or purple, depending on what uh, monitor you're using, I guess. Uh, and this is our own custom script that we can call and do whatever we want with. Uh, the scripts in GameMaker, the pre-made ones, you know, you, like Collision Circle, Keyboard Check are great, but a lot of them we're going to want to create ourselves, and the power to do that is fantastic. Uh, script is also another word for function or method, depending on what kind of programming background you come from. So inside this script, I'm going to just give it a quick uh, description so that we know exactly what we are going to do with this script. Begin dialogue between player and message giver. Okay, first thing we want to do is create a dialogue box. And the cool thing about this is that we're going to make a dialogue box that will always be exactly in the middle of your screen. The way we're going to do that is by using the view and the ports that are currently active on your game. Because what you are seeing is the view that is currently active. So if we take the view width and the view height, divide those by two, we're going to have exactly the middle of the screen. We're using the view current because you can change views and we're going to create a dialog box. So that's all we're going to do for that script for this second. Let's go ahead and run it and make sure that this code is working properly because sometimes it can be, you know, coming up with a glitch or an error or something and you code a lot, you just get problems. So I'm here, I'm going to press start. Perfect. Uh, that's great. Now, one thing we want to change is that we don't want Sarah to actually be able to walk around while we are creating, while we're talking. So inside of Sarah's create event, let's make another variable. Actually, sorry, we already have the variable right here. So we have is talking. So we're going to come into our step and our movement here. And now we're get, so, oh, hey, look at that. I've already done a lot for you. So this is if we are not talking, it's already set. The thing we have to check right here is set is talking to true. And we should always label our code. Okay, collision detection. Now we are good to go. So when we run up and we talk to someone, we're not gonna be able to move. Press start. Okay, when we're talking, we don't wanna be able to run around. Unless you do, then obviously don't set that in. But I don't want you to be able to move around because you're going to have to choose from options using those same kinds of keys. So before we get into the next part, let's take a second and I want to talk about arrays. Because arrays are what we're going to be using to store the dialogue and to do a lot of accessing in this because arrays are super useful. So if you don't know, arrays are a way to store data inside of one variable, and it is a way to store a huge amount of data, both similar terms and terms that are not similar. So here is a one-dimensional array. So you have a variable, and then you access that variable in like different spots. If you've used alarms in GameMaker, that is an array. So you would say like alarm bracket zero, that is the first index inside of that alarm array. So you can store strings, integers, custom data types, whatever you want. Arrays are super useful. And we're gonna be using two-dimensional arrays. So we're gonna have two ways, or two necessary uh, indexes to access it. So we'll have zero, zero, which is you know the first one, and then you have zero, one, two, all the way up to whatever value you have. And you also have it going downwards. Now, we're going to be using this to store the dialog for the NPC. And the way this is going to work is that, well, we'll get into it. But basically, a 2D array is accessed like it shows right down here. You have your array variable accessed by one number, comma, a second number. And that is going to be how we access all of the arrays that we're going to be doing inside of here. It's going to be kind of complicated, and I guarantee you are going to get a lot of errors as we go about this, but you will also learn a tremendous amount about 
arrays and the best way to access them. And again, the final project will be in the comments of each video, so download that if you have any problems and you can check your code against my final project code, which does run perfectly. So that all being said, let's jump into the robot. And inside of here, I have the image speed set message and the beginning dialogue for him. Now you can see this is a two dimensional array and how this is gonna work is the zero zero is going to be the first conversation that it has with the player depending on whenever you start it. And then we're also going to have options if you want them in the uh, the latter half of the first index of this two-dimensional array. So you can imagine that the first one is this hello human and then any options that you want the player to be able to communicate back is going to be in zero, one, two, three, four, however many options you wanted. Um, it's going great. It would be one option. And then we could also say if we wanted to be able to say uh, Give me your lunch money. And so those are going to pop up and allow the player to choose between them. And you can be, oh, <laughs> zero, two. And you'll be able to choose as many of these as you want or as few, and they will come up like I showed. So we've got this, but for now, we're just gonna focus on this right here, okay? Start simple. So we've got my message, we got the hello human, and now we want this message to display alongside uh, the, the dialog box when it gets created, because right now it's not, it's, it isn't coming up. So inside of the dialog box object, we're actually gonna have it take care of displaying the message for us, because that's just a very simple way to have it do it, and each dialog box will know exactly what it should be displaying and what it shouldn't be displaying. It makes it very simple and easy to do. First though, we need to set up some variables. So we're gonna add a create event, drag over some code, and these are gonna be called var my message, max length, and max height. So this is a way to create several variables without giving them any, uh, without assigning any properties to them at the time because we are gonna assign all of these inside of the script dialog that we are calling. Because each time we call a dialog, we're gonna set up the dialog box that's going to be created inside of it. So let's go ahead and jump into the script here. And inside of here, uh, we have the dialog box that we've made. Now we're gonna say with this dialog box, this allows us to access the dialog box's properties directly without having to go like, dialog box dot max length. So it, it makes it much more efficient and easier to set up. So inside of here, we are going to set the max length, which will be equal to the sprite width minus 48. And this is gonna set it up specifically for the sprite I've chosen. Now, if you choose a different sprite, uh, you might want to adjust this portion right here because my sprite, uh, I want it to come down about 48 pixels because that's the border that it has or come inside about 48 pixels. Uh, if you have a different border length, then you might want to change that. I'm gonna do minus 48 for both of these, but the width and the height will adjust depending on um, what we've got here. Now, we're gonna set my message. And for the for the starting, we're just going to say my message equals message giver zero zero, because that's exactly what it's going to be every single time. Okay, now we have set up the dialog box that is created. Last thing we're going to do is create a draw event inside of the dialog box. Add some code, draw given text. First thing we're gonna to wanna to do is we're gonna draw self because we want to continue to, we want it to draw its own sprite. And then we're gonna say, um, draw the text that you've been given at a certain point in your own sprite. And the way that looks 
is like this. We're going to draw text, and we're going to say draw text ext extended, because we're going to we're going to use those variables max height and max width so that it stays within the correct boundaries. We're going to say b box left, which is bounding box left plus 32, b box top plus 32, which is for the x and y of where this is going to start. So it's going to start in the top left. And we're going to say my message. And we have a separation down here. So we're going to put a separation of 16, and that'll be for the line height between them. And then the width is going to be max length. So that means that it's not going to draw uh, the text outside of the sprite that we are creating. So let's go ahead and run this and check it because this should be a good place to stop. Press spacebar and we are trying to index a variable which is not an array. Okay, so at script dialog line seven, my message, message giver, ah, Let's go into script dialog. Now, it knows what message giver is, but I didn't say specifically what I was looking for. So message giver dot my dialog, because the message giver is the robot, and his variable is my dialog. I didn't set that up. Now, let's try this again. Okay, that's the box. That's what we want. We can't do anything more than that just yet, but that is a just that's a dialog box coming up with the text that we are passing in from another character, which is great. If all you want to do is show one message, then this is a pretty good, pretty good place. Um, yeah, I like this. Now, I also like to keep in those little debugs and errors because I know sometimes you guys will encounter them as you're following along, especially if I mistype. And me debugging while I'm coding, I, I hope is helpful. So that's it for part one, guys. We are going to take on this in, in bite-sized chunks. And by the end, you're going to have a fully fleshed out dialogue system that I hope will be super useful to you in whatever kind of game you make. Because really, we talk to NPCs in almost every single game we play. So, as always, I can't wait to talk to you next time and have fun making great games. And I will talk to you later. <laughs>